So what is the best time of day to use your red light therapy device? So red light therapy is one of the most prominent forms of light therapy these days. And one of the most frequently asked questions that we get here at Mitochondria is, what is the best time of day to do my red light therapy sessions? In this video, we're going to discuss, you know, the impact that red and infrared light has on your circadian rhythm and whether or not you want to be uh, doing your red light therapy sessions at a certain time of day. What's up guys, it's Nick Kutzer here from Mitochondria and welcome to our YouTube channel. On this channel, you're gonna find content all around light, circadian rhythms, and how you can optimize these things in order to live your best life. If you haven't already done so, then please make sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you will get a notification every time we release a new video and you won't miss any of our future content. So for today's video, we're gonna be talking about a really important question and that is, you know, what is the best time of day to do my red light therapy sessions? Now, if you hadn't thought of this question before watching this video, then I just want to give you a bit of an understanding of why someone would ask this question. So when you're talking about your circadian rhythm or your internal body clock, one of the primary um, environmental cues that will set your circadian rhythm is your light environment. So it's a very you know, logical question to ask, you know, with my red light therapy device, do I need to be careful of using it at the wrong time of day? You know, is it going to offset my circadian rhythm and make that whole rhythm go off and then affect something like my sleep quality? So what's really important to understand is, although we do say light is the primary factor for setting your circadian rhythm, it is also color specific. So the shorter wavelengths of light, your colors such as blue, that type of light in nature would vary quite a lot across the day. So the amount of uh, light that, blue light that you would receive would be very different in the morning versus the middle of the day or even at nighttime. In nature, you would never get exposed to artificial, you know, big concentrations of artificial blue light at night, whereas in the daytime you would get blue light. So what our brain has basically learned is that, you know, whenever blue light enters our eyes, it must be daytime. So as a consequence, whenever, you know, your blue light is entering your eyes, you will elevate your levels of cortisol and you will decrease the amount of melatonin that your body produces. So that's obviously going to keep you awake. And that's one of the biggest problems with artificial light at night is it has very high concentrations of blue light. So you can basically replicate the day signals to your brain by um, looking at like your cell phone or computer or having overhead lighting that is the standard artificial light that has a lot of blue light in it. Now, when you look at the longer wavelengths of light, things like red and infrared light, what you find is that in nature, that type of light was very consistent throughout the day. Longer wavelengths of light tend to travel a lot better through our atmosphere. So whether the sun was in the horizon or whether it was directly above us, you would have a very consistent uh, uh, concentration of red and infrared light uh, getting to you. And at nighttime, it was also possible that you could be exposed to red and infrared light. That could have been from a fire or even in the form of heat. Heat is an infra uh, is infrared light that you could receive from another body or from a warm object um, you know, that had been warm during the day. That would be another source of infrared light that you would get at nighttime. So basically, we have developed a sleep immunity to red and infrared light where it won't signal daytime to us because it would have made no sense to tell our brains that it's daytime when it's actually the type of light that we could have been exposed to anywhere within a 24-hour cycle. So the question definitely makes sense to you know, be concerned with uh, light therapy in general. You know, will that have some kind of effect on my circadian rhythm? With red uh, light therapy, there's a very low chance that it is going to have any impact on it because in nature it was such a dominant uh, type of light that we were exposed to. So it doesn't uh, stimulate your circadian rhythm in the same way that blue light does. Now with that said, um, red light therapy is an unnaturally high uh, or unnaturally powerful form of red and infrared light. So at nighttime, what you might find, and we've had this with some of our customers, is they say that if they do a treatment aimed at their face, even if their eyes are closed, because it is such a bright light, it's, it's still red and infrared light, but because it's so bright, it can have quite a stimulatory effect on your brain. So you might feel awake and alert, which is obviously a great thing if you do your red light therapy session during the day, but within an hour or two before um, bedtime, it might be a better idea to not do your red light therapy sessions aimed directly at your face because some people do find this quite uh, stimulating. 
Lastly, if you have a specific benefit that you're trying to achieve, then there might be a better time of day for that specific benefit. So just to give you two examples, um, and I'll link some videos in the description below that cover these specific benefits, but something like muscle recovery, the best time of day is going to be immediately after your workout, be that if you work out in the morning or if you work out in the evening, what the research has shown is that you get the best muscle recovery when it's done immediately after your workout. Another example is sleep quality. And we've got a fantastic study on red light therapy and sleep quality, which I will leave in the description below, um, where they increased their melatonin by as much as 75%. And in that study, what they found is they were doing their red light therapy sessions in the evening in order to increase the melatonin production and obviously to optimize your sleep quality. So if you wanna look at a specific benefit, then check out some of the videos on this channel or the two that I will link uh, in this video description, because there might be a specific time of day but more important than anything, you know, the time of day is a little bit important, but it's not as important as how consistent you're going to be with your red light therapy sessions. If you want to get the best results, then you should be doing your red light therapy sessions every single day. So based on your specific schedule, try and figure out, you know, when you're going to be the most consistent. When will you always be able to set aside five to ten minutes in order to do your red light therapy sessions? Now, for most people, we find that um, in the morning, that is the best time and when you will be the most consistent. But figure that out based on your schedule. You know, if you've got a really busy morning and you know that your evenings are quite free, then do your red light therapy sessions then. But don't think that, oh, you know, the best time of day would have been in the morning. I wish I could do it then. When the most important thing is that you are consistent with your red light therapy sessions. If you guys have any questions, then you're welcome to drop them in the comments section below. If you want to check out some of the best red light therapy devices on the market that are EMF uh, free, they flicker free, and they're extremely powerful, which means you can do your red light therapy sessions in really short sessions, then make sure that you check out the mitochondria devices available on mitochondria.com. But otherwise, I hope that you guys have a fantastic day further, and we will chat again soon. Cheers.